All right, I'm gonna generate the sum and difference trig identities here. What I have is a rectangle. You can see I've marked these three angles as 90 degrees. This one is also 90 degrees, but I didn't mark it because I had other things down here. Inside my rectangle, I have a right triangle. As you can see here, there's the right angle. I have decided that the hypotenuse is going to be one. This angle down here marked in green is beta, and this angle right here marked in red is alpha. So let's start with the triangle here in the middle, this right triangle. We know from SOHCAHTOA that the sine of this angle beta will be equal to the length of the opposite side over the length of the hypotenuse. In other words, sine of beta equals opposite over one, since our hypotenuse is one in this particular triangle. So from there, we can see that the opposite side is actually just gonna be equal to sine of beta. Now, we, if we look again at this right triangle, the, uh, the adjacent side here over the opposite, over, excuse me, the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, that's equal to the cosine of the angle. So in other words, cosine of beta is adjacent over one, which leads us to the cosine of beta would have to be equal to the adjacent side. So I'm gonna label this side as cosine of beta. Okay, let's look at this triangle up here, which also is a right triangle and has a hypotenuse of one. The only angle I have marked in here is the right angle. But let's consider this. When you have a rectangle, those opposite sides are gonna be parallel and two parallel lines cut by a transversal, your alternate interior angles are gonna be congruent. So this angle here is congruent to this angle here. So we're gonna label this angle alpha plus beta. Okay, so in my right triangle here, alpha plus beta, we again know that the sine of the angle is equal to the length of the opposite side over the length of the hypotenuse, which is one, which leads to the opposite side for this triangle is just gonna be equal to the sine of alpha plus beta. Similarly, for the, this right triangle, since for the same right triangle, this is my adjacent side. So you can probably figure out that the adjacent side is gonna be the cosine of alpha plus beta, cosine of alpha plus beta. You know, I'm actually gonna label all of the points of my um, rectangle, let's call this rectangle A, B, C, D, and maybe this point up here is E, and this point right here is F. So what I've just concluded is that A to E is equal to cosine of alpha plus beta. Okay, let's take a look at this triangle down here. So what we, same thing that we've been doing the whole time, the opposite side of alpha is gonna be equal to, excuse me, the sine of alpha is equal to the length of the opposite side over the length of the hypotenuse. So we have then the sine of alpha is equal to the length of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse, however, this time is cosine of beta. So if I take this relationship and I isolate opposite, in other words, I multiply both sides by cosine beta, then I have that the opposite is equal to sine of alpha times cosine of beta. Sticking with this triangle down here, the adjacent side is gonna be equal to, excuse me, the cosine of alpha will be equal to the length of the adjacent side over the length of the hypotenuse. The cosine of alpha is equal to the length of the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, where the hypotenuse in this case is cosine of beta. So I have this relationship, and if I isolate adjacent, then I get cosine alpha times cosine beta. Okay, let's take a look at our final triangle up here. And we need an angle. So let's take a look at this. So we, if we go back down to this triangle here, this angle we called alpha, that's of course a 90 degree. This angle up here, let's call that uh, gamma. Let's say gamma, that gamma symbol looks a little bit like that. Hopefully you agree that alpha plus gamma plus 90 degrees is equal to 180. Well, look right here. These three angles, gamma plus 90 degrees plus this angle, also equal 180 degrees. So we can conclude that this angle right here is also gonna be equal to alpha. Now in this triangle, we have an angle and we can say that the sine of that angle alpha is equal to the length of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So the sine of alpha is equal to the length of the opposite side over the hypotenuse, which in this case is sine of beta. So we can take this relationship, solve for opposite, multiply both sides. We're gonna get sine alpha, sine beta. Okay, almost there, one more side here. This side is adjacent to my angle alpha, and we know that the cosine of an angle of, in a right triangle is the length of the adjacent side over the length of the hypotenuse. So cosine of alpha equals adjacent over the hypotenuse, where the hypotenuse happens to be sine of beta. So that leaves the adjacent side to be equal to cosine of alpha, sine of beta.
Now, let's take a look at the big rectangle that we have here. So all the little pieces are labeled. So we also know from a rectangle, not only are the so opposite sides parallel, but they're also congruent. So if we look at this side right here, let's go to the, yeah, the sides here, AD and BC. We know that the sine of alpha plus beta, this side here, is equal to this, this whole thing here. So we can say that sine of alpha plus beta, that's this side here, is equal to cosine of alpha times sine of beta plus sine of alpha cosine of beta. And then we can do the same thing for the other two sides of the rectangle. So this side up here is cosine of alpha plus beta plus sine of alpha times the sine of beta is equal to the length of this side down here, which is cosine alpha times cosine beta. Cosine alpha, cosine beta. So now if I take this relationship and I want to isolate cosine of alpha plus beta, I can just subtract this to put it on the other side, which will lead to cosine of alpha plus beta equals cosine of alpha, cosine of beta minus sine of alpha, sine of beta. So what we have here are, our, what we call this our sum uh, sine identity, and then we have our cosine sum identity. Sometimes it's called the addition identity. So that was, that's the one for sine, and this is the one for cosine. We can also generate the difference identities here. All right, so what I have is I've copied over the sine sum identity or the sine addition identity. And what I want to do now is, um, let's call this sine of alpha plus negative beta. What if we were to do that? And hopefully you agree that sine of alpha plus negative beta is the same thing as sine of alpha minus beta. Okay, so back up here, everywhere that I have a beta, I'm going to substitute negative beta. Well, there's a few other identities that we need to bring up, which is sometimes these are called your even odd identities. Sometimes they're called your negative angle identities. But the sine of negative theta is equal to negative sine of theta. That's because a sine function is an odd function. And then cosine of negative theta is equal to cosine of theta because cosine is an even function. So looking here, sine of negative beta, well, we know that's going to be the same thing as negative sine of theta. So this becomes cosine alpha times negative sine of beta plus sine of alpha and then cosine of negative beta. Well, that's just going to be the same thing as cosine of beta. Cosine of beta. And then here, if we have a positive times a negative, that makes that whole term negative. So this is negative cosine alpha sine beta plus sine alpha cosine beta. But typically, we like to have that negative in the middle. So I'm just going to switch these terms around. And I have sine alpha cosine beta minus cosine alpha sine beta. And that's equal to the sine of alpha minus beta. So that is your sine difference identity or your sine subtraction identity. OK, I'm going to do the same thing for the cosine. I'm going to change this or rather substitute, instead of beta, I'm going to do negative beta, so cosine of alpha plus negative beta, which of course is the same thing as um, co alpha minus beta, cosine of alpha minus beta. So I'm going to make these substitutions, so cosine of alpha, cosine of negative beta, minus sine of alpha times sine of negative beta. And then again, using these even odd identities up here, cosine of negative beta, well, that's an even function, so it just becomes cosine of beta, cosine alpha times cosine beta, minus sine alpha, and the sine of negative beta, because that's an odd function, that's going to be negative sine of beta. It's an identity. And of course, when you have a negative term times a negative term, that becomes a positive term. So we have cosine alpha cosine beta plus sine alpha sine beta, and that's equal to cosine of alpha minus beta. And there, ladies and gentlemen, is the cosine difference identity. I hope you enjoyed my video.